Okay, I'm just going to show you a very, very quick tutorial on how I end up with this particular kind of picture where we have the subject on one side of the frame and on the other side of the frame we have all this empty space. Uh, if I can help it nowadays, I won't photograph the, the picture this particular way. Reason being is I'm only using, in this particular case, I'm only using about one third of the sensor to capture all the detail. The rest of it's being used to capture this black hole. So what I'll do generally nowadays, I'll photograph the picture like this so that my subject is filling the majority of the frame and I'll leave just a little bit of space around the outside so that if a later stage I do want to increase the background or the canvas, I can do. So how do I do that? There are loads and loads of different ways, but this is the way that I prefer it because I can actually see what I'm getting before I commit myself to it. And all I'll do in this particular case here, I want to extend the canvas or the background, this black background, to the right hand side here. So there's more of it behind our model. Now to do that, the first thing I'll do, I need to unlock the background layer. And by that I mean, at the moment we've only got one picture open. So that is our background layer and by default that's locked. And we can tell that by having this little padlock here. For this technique to work I need to unlock it. So to do that all I'd simply do is double click on the layer. This little dialog box comes up and I click OK. So now if I zoom in straight away we can see that it's changed from saying background to saying layer zero and the padlock has in fact gone. So it's now unlocked and ready to be worked on. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the crop tool and I can either get that by pressing C on the keyboard as a shortcut or just coming up here to the, uh, the toolbar and then clicking on the little crop tool here, clicking on that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag the boundaries of the crop tool around the whole of the photograph. So now I've got all the crop handles around the whole of the picture. And I'll just zoom in to show you one of those crop handles just here on the right hand side. And if I put my cursor over it you can see that you get these little right and left arrows. Now all I simply do in this particular technique, I want to go to the right so I'm going to grab this little handle here and drag out just a little bit to the right and I probably want to go to around about there. I'm going to let go of my mouse button, commit that by pressing the, the enter or return key on your keyboard. Now straight away we can see we've got all this empty space here so quite simply all I need to do now is fill this empty space here with the colour that we see surrounding our model. The way I do that is because this may not be completely black in this case, I'm going to get the eyedropper tool, which again is up here in the toolbar, so I'll just zoom in here for you, get the eyedropper tool, click on that, and then all I do is sample right on the outside of the picture here, just where the picture is ending, I'm going to click and sample that pitch, that colour there. So by me doing that, what that happens is, the colour down here, around this side of the picture here, is then sampled into my, as my foreground colour there. All I need to do now is fill this space here with that foreground colour. But what I don't want to do is just fill it as it is with just one layer because if I do that, all that's going to happen is I'm going to cover over my photograph. So what I clearly need to do, I need to add another layer. So I'm going to come up to the layers panel here, add, a, uh, add another layer by clicking on here and that goes above as you can see. If I click on that and then drag it below our main photograph, and then all I'll do is I'll go to the image menu at the top of the screen, it's just out of, out of view unfortunately for yourselves, go to image, oh, hold on, sorry, uh, try again, we'll go to edit and then see, not definitely perfect to do this, go to edit, then fill, and just make sure here when the dialog box comes, dialog box comes up that it says foreground colour, because that's what we've sampled. Click OK, and there you go, it now fills it in so it seamlessly extends that sort of uh, that background behind our model. And all I did in the, uh, the final photograph was, did a simple black and white conversion in Photoshop and then just added a little bit of text down the bottom right hand side. And that is all there is to it.